So you've been hearing all about ERC-404 and watching the charts go wild like projects like Pandora, which started off at a couple hundred dollars and then went on a tear. It went up to about $32,000. So at some point you probably came across ERC-404 this week or you saw it on your timeline somewhere on X or Twitter. What is it all about? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be going over what ERC-404 is all about, what makes it novel, new, experimental, and why it's been ripping. Before I get into the video, remember that none of this is financial advice. The crypto market is extremely volatile, so make sure you do your own due diligence and research before you get into any project. Furthermore, I have no bags in any of the projects that I'm talking about. I'm just interested in this topic and it is something to watch out for because it's becoming a hot narrative within crypto. With that out of the way, let's get into it. So let's get first into this chart. If you take a close look at this chart, it really started out on February the 2nd when it was down all the way to, you know, you could have probably picked it up at 250, 3, 4, 500, and then it started to creep its way up and literally within days it touched about a couple of thousand dollars. And then about six days later, right over here, it got to about $32,000 on February the 8th. So really rock it up. So depending on when you got in, that was 100x, 130x. And then if you got in at $200, it rocketed up 160x within that time frame. That's 16,000%. Now let's talk about what makes ERC-404 so special. So what makes ERC-404 so special is because it's a new token that's mixed out of two tokens that we know. On one hand, we have ERC-20 tokens. Those are the ones that you buy in Uniswap, Dex Tools. The most famous one is Ethereum. On the other hand, what you have is ERC-721. Those are your NFTs. Those are your board eight yachts, you know, Pudgy Penguins, those are your CryptoPunks, and all the NFTs we come and know and love. When you take those two together and you combine the two, that's when you have an ERC-404 token. So here you can see it in graphical representation. This is the ERC-404, right? We talked about the ERC-20 token right over here. That's your Ethereum token. The ERC-721 right over here. The two of them combined giving you this new token. Now this new token is known as an experimental mix of your ERC-20 and the ERC-721 token implementation. And then we're going to talk about what makes this token so special with it increasing native liquidity and fractionalization. What does that actually mean? But for now, I just want you to focus on here, right? So we have ERC-20 plus 721. That's your new token that you have right now. And that's the token that they are trading. So now that we understand what an ERC-404 token is, let's talk mechanics for a little. So if you buy an ERC-404 token, so you actually get one token, and then you also mint an NFT. So every time you buy a single token, you have to buy one whole token, you actually mint an NFT that comes along with your token. Now what happens if you buy less than one token? Let's say you buy 0.9. So if you're only buying 0.9, you actually only get the token, but you don't get the NFT. So this is graphically represented in this chart really well. So notice right here, if you buy an ERC-404, you buy an entire token, that means you receive both the token that's represented by an ERC-20 plus you get the NFT, so the ERC-721, okay? So right now, if you buy one whole ERC-404 token, remember you get one token and one NFT. Now if you buy less than one token like 0.9, if you see up here, if you're only buying 0 0.9, 0 0.8, whatever it is, and it's not a whole number, then you are only receiving the token. You're only receiving 0 0.9 or 0.8 of that ERC-404 token. That's why it's only represented in a token and not an NMT. So I hope that clarifies it right away. So getting back to the Pandora chart, Pandora is a specific example of an ERC-404 project, okay? If you just take a look at the chart right over here, we'll talk about price within a second. But if you scroll down and you see people buying Pandora right over here, notice that this one, they sold the Pandora. This one, they're only buying a 0.4 of a Pandora token, which means they wouldn't have gotten that NFT because you have to buy a single, a whole token of Pandora. Notice down here, this person bought right over here, 1.005 amount of Pandora. So they paid 6.3 ETH, wrap ETH for that Pandora token. That means that this individual right here is getting a whole token a whole Pandora token plus the associated NFT that's associated with that Pandora token. Now let's talk about the mechanics of how, you know, how the tokens work, how the NFTs work to so that we can get a better, clearer understanding of it. 
So here's a really cool chart that somebody put up on X or Twitter talking about this whole process and mechanics of being able to transfer the NFT and what happens when you buy it, you sell it. Let's just go through it together. So first off, if you buy an ERC-404 token, zoom in right over here. So I'm just going to zoom in. So notice right here, you buy an ERC-404 token. Is it a whole token, 1.0 token, or is it less, okay? So if it's a whole token, it's really easy to understand because you get the tokens, okay? You get that ERC-404, and you get a random, an NFT with a random rarity, okay? So that's generated for you. Now, what happens when you have that token and that NFT? So right over here, okay? Let's talk about the NFT first. So in terms of the NFT, you can take that NFT like any NFT, you can sell it back to, you know, an NFT marketplace like Blur.io or OpenSea. Those are the two most popular ones, okay? The minute you sell that NFT, what do you get? Well, you get the value of that NFT back, right? Whatever you sold it for, that's the value that you bring back. What happens to the new wallet that buys it? Well, if they bought it as a whole, what happens is that they mint a new NFT, just like the way you did if you had bought that 1.0 token of that ERC-404 token, okay? Now, what happens to the token? So if I'm not selling the NFT and I want to sell the token, what happens? I take it to a DEX, like Uniswap, like DEX tools, okay? If you sell that token away, that NFT is burnt. Remember what we said? And then you receive the value of that ERC, uh, you know, ERC20 token, okay? So that's the value of the token that you've sold. Your NFT is burnt. That's pretty easy. Now, what happens if you want to hold for, you know, potential value increases? Like most of us buy a project, we hold it, okay? So what happens? So here's the decision. If you just transfer the NFT, so that's the NFT side, from wallet to wallet, nothing happens to your NFT. But if you transfer the tokens, okay? So if you take your token, you transfer it to a new wallet, what happens is that you generate a new NFT with a new rarity. So that's what happens with the reroll for new rarity, okay? So new NFT with change rarity. Or, of course, you can trade and hold as per strategy. So I'm going to link this chart below in the description below that Twitter post about it. And then I'm also going to link a couple of articles below so that it helps you understand how the mechanics of ERC-404 tokens work. So now you're sitting there and saying to yourself, okay, ERC-404, I got it. It's a combination between ERC-20 and the ERC-721. We put it together, we have some mechanics. What makes this token so special? You're sitting there and wondering. Well, what makes it special is that it does two things. Number one is drastically improve liquidity to the NFT market. Now in the past, when you bought a Bored Ape Yacht or a Pudgy Penguin, you know, or you bought a CryptoPunk, any of those NFTs, what happens is that you have to list it on the traditional market. Market. On Blur.io or on OpenSea or any market of your choice, on Magic Eden if you're buying NFTs there. But what happens is that the NFTs are tied on there waiting for a buyer to come by and actually pick it up. You can see how illiquid this is, especially for the people who are whales or who own like, you know, 5, 10 NFTs. This would not be an ideal situation to be in because the liquidity is so small. So how ERC-404 solves this liquidity problem is that notice right over here, this chart we're going to go back to here, is that once you have that ERC-404, you actually have a token and you have an NFT, right? That's what we have right over here. So what you could actually do is you could either sell it on these traditional market, that's your NFT, or you could sell the token away, right? So Pandora, like I said, so here's that token, here's that ERC-404 token. You can take your token, in this case it happens to be Pandora, but it could be any ERC-404 token. You can take that token, walk over to Uniswap or Dex Tools, wherever it may be, and sell it off. Do you see how that creates a tremendous amount of liquidity? Because what it does is it actually allows you to own the NFT by using tokens, ERC-20 tokens, to be able to own this NFT and go in and sell it off all the time, at any time. It creates a tremendous amount of liquidity on there. So if I go back to Pandora, which is an example of an ERC-404 token, if you take a look at the liquidity right over here, that's a huge amount of liquidity for a brand new token that's only been out a couple of days, for a week, for two weeks, right? It's got almost $35 million of liquidity. The market cap right now is 142 million market cap. So the second major thing that ERC-404 tokens bring is that it brings native fractionalization of ownership within NFT collections. Now, what does this actually mean? 
In the past, there are fractionalization protocols that allow you to fractionalize NFTs. So what happens is you have an NFT, and then there's a share or an IOU get, gets issued where it says that you own that NFT, okay? But that's tied back to that. So those protocols were not that exciting. Now, in native fractionalization, what happens is that you think about an NFT, it's broken down into a bunch of pieces, and those pieces are the ERC-20 tokens that you can buy one whole ERC-20 token up, or you can buy a 0.9 up. Remember, it's a combination of ERC-20 tokens and ERC-721. That's what makes this native fractionalization so cool. And what it does is it allows fractionalization ownership of an NFT through ERC-20 tokens, okay? So that's what makes it really cool. I'll take us back into memory lane. So remember the Azuki collection? It's still a relatively popular collection and it's still pretty pricey to get into. But if you remember what made Azuki so special, right? Besides the really cool art and, you know, they had some pretty cool vibes when they came out. Um, what makes them so special is this ERC-721A. So that was the first improvement on ERC-721, which is the the NFT and then if you you were in the previous market you notice that ERC 721A is an improvement to the implementation of this that supports minting multiple tokens for the cost of one token. So that was the initial sort of advancement in the NFT space because minting was so expensive sometimes it would cost one two three ETH to just mint so thousands of dollars. So I do think that ERC-404 is a significant leap from this ERC-721A upgrade. You can clearly see that there's gonna be some really cool applications of this ERC-404 token when it comes into play. Remember Beepo's art, the uh, first thousand day that sold for $69 million? What it could have done was, if this was an ERC-404 token, it would have been, have been just one owner that owned the entire NFT, but everybody could have taken part in it, and then you can trade, buy, you know, have fractionalized ownership of the NFT itself. And then you could see lending boring protocols improve drastically and then liquidity allowing people and market participants to come in and out making the NFT market much more liquid than what it is today. So just go to CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko and take a look at ERC-404 tokens. You can see right over here, I'm just going to click on this, it's going to refresh and renew. You can see that Pandora is the top one right now, right? It's one of the first ones to be launched. Actually the first one that was launched was Emeroid, but we're not going to go into that. There's a bit of history behind that. We're not going to go into that today, but consider Pandora as sort of the first out of the gate. So right now it's still priced pretty high. The market cap is, is you know, a lot. Look at its 24 hour volume, right? It's still going at $48 million. So it's very liquid right over here. And of course, would I buy a Pandora token right now? Obviously not. I, I wouldn't go and ape in for like 17, 18, 22 grand. It trades up and down because it's extremely volatile. It is extremely new. But what it does is it should get you thinking about what ERC-404 tokens are, remember that it's experimental, it's non-standard. So there's a lot of hidden unknowns. There may be stuff that's wrong with the contract, so I would wait for it, but I would put it on your radar to take a closer look. So there are other projects right over here that you can see. Uh, Defrogs was one that was taking off. At, at one point, it was trading for a couple of thousand dollars, and that's what I mean. These projects, they go up and down like crazy. So I would look through these right now, right? There, there's some other tokens, but I would take a look through these projects. I'm just going to go to the chart and take a look at Pandora, what it's doing right now. Okay, so if we take a look at Pandora's chart, right? Like if we zoom out and we look all the way down here, remember it was trading for hundreds of dollars. It had its run up in about six days, topping at 32,000. And then of course the market goes through a dump right over here. Now remind you that it's a relatively new token. So there's a lot that's going on with this token, like any token. If you've been watching my channel, you know I advocate for never buying right out of the gates. Whether it's an IDO or first day token launch, prices are crazy, wait for them to normalize. This is a classic crypto pattern right over here where, you know, it boats up, there's a lot of excitement, then it comes down to earth, right? So whatever tokens go up will need to come down. So this is playing out classically, and at one point it did drop to, you know, it wicked down to about $12,000, okay? And then it's coming back up, but this is a relatively new token. So right now, I would watch this token for a while, and of course, don't ape in with like 
you know, ten, seventeen thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. I would watch for similar tokens coming out because there's going to be improvements to these tokens. There's going to be better collections, but it is a very radical and novel idea to look at. So I hope that you enjoyed that content. You learned something new. You know what ERC four hundred four tokens are and why they are making the news every day. And please hit the like button. Consider subscribing. I will see you in the next video.